So, making your ball course. Uh, I mentioned that I'd just uh, do a real brief video on how you could uh, quickly mock up the props and obstacles that you're going to be able to animate against when you do your animated ball course. Okay? Um, when you do the assignment, I'd like you, I want you to do it in an orthogonal view as usual. Um, it's going to be a complicated animation. I'm going to be looking at your performance. Um, it's much more about how you're controlling the animation, how you're controlling your speed, um, your impacts, how it affects the geometry you hit. So if you hit a spinner, does the spinner spin and then come to a stop? Um, your arcs, your timing. So for me, when I'm watching this, that's what it's all about. And a well-executed ball course animation um, really, really gives an animation supervisor or someone who might be looking at you as an intern a real clue on how you handle motion. So uh, as far as building out props, there's a lot of different ways to do it. So I'm just going to show you a couple of the simplest ways. Um, what we can do is we just go into the right view for a second and use the grid. Um, one of the handiest tools that you're going to find is going to be right up here. We're in the polygon section, okay? And under mesh, uh, unless you're using Maya 2015 and then God knows where they put it, uh, <laughs> uh, but it's likely here, um, is the create polygon tool. Okay, and what the Create Polygon tool does is literally you just drop a couple of points and you can hit enter and you have a polygon. And there you go. Um, whenever you create using this tool, the pivot point is going to be created at the center of the universe, not the center of the object. So if you want your pivot to be in the center of your object, you're going to need to go up to the Modify menu and click the Center Pivot so that you can actually move this wherever you want. Okay. So but a little bit more specifically, let's do, go back into the tool one more time. And this time I'm going to use snap. And I want to snap to the grid. So as we know, if you look at it right up here, um, all we have to do is hold down the X key. Okay, and let's say I wanted to make a quick ramp. So where's the zero plane for a second? It is here somewhere. Well, it doesn't really matter. I don't know. Come back for it. So let's say this is going to be the base of my ramp. And I'm going to make the ramp this high, there's going to be a little flat zone on the top. The ramp is going to come out to here. And I hit enter. And there you go. There's a ramp. Pretty simple. Um, again, we could just use the modify center pivot command. And when you look at this in this viewport, you'll notice one side's dark, one side's light. I have that like that under lighting. I like to keep, when I'm modeling and doing things, I like to keep turn two-sided lighting off. Um, what you're looking at, and it's not really important to you guys at this stage, is you can see which direction your normals are facing. So in this case, um, the normal for this polygon object, or this polygon, or n-gon, since it has more than four sides, is facing this way. It's black on this side because this is the back of the polygon. Polygons, by default, are one-sided. So this way, I know which way will face forward and which way will be renderable. Um, and you only get to see that if you have this turned off. So that's why that was black. But here's your ramp, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down the D and V key. And what I can do is I can actually snap the pivot down to this corner. And all I'll do now is I'm going to hold down the X key and I can snap this right to the center point. So then I can just move it around, do anything I want, but it's right there on the center point. Okay, so there's a ramp. Now we could give this depth and we can give it a color, same as we could do anything else. So we go favorite material, let's give it a Lambert and make it a red Lambert. So well, get a brighter red so you can actually see it. There you go. Uh, let's say you wanted to create like a diving board sort of a thing up here. So maybe you want to use the same tool again. So we'll go mesh. Create Polygon Tool, all right? So what it'll do down here is, let's just say it's gonna have a little bit of a footing and then it'll go straight up and then kind of stick out like that. So I'm going to hold down X. I'm going to say we're gonna start here and then I'm gonna go two in this direction, down. This is gonna be the post, so two in this direction. Two, one up, two over, and we're gonna go up to here, there you go. Then we'll go over to somewhere like this. 
and like this, and then back into here. And we hit enter. Okay. Again, I happen to have a shortcut so I can center my pivot. I can right click on this and add an existing material. And we can, I have a red material, so we could do that. Um, there you go. So now we have a ramp and we have this. Let's say we wanted to create something that was made out of based on a 3D, because using this technique to create something like a um, half pipe would be um, a little bit of a chore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two guys for now, just so I can get them out of my road, and we will shove them over here. Okay. So what I'll do now is I'm going to do shift right click, and I'm going to use a piece of uh, 3D geometry or a primitive. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a pipe. Okay. So we'll grab a pipe right here. Oops, zoom in on it by hitting F. All right. A couple things I'm going to change. So we're going to go into the channel box and I'd like its radius to be three. All right. And that's fine. That'll do. The only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate it up 90 degrees on the X axis. So it's vertical and I'm going to move it up three degrees or three units, which is the same as its radius so that it sits right on the ground, okay? So in this case, all I want is this portion of it, because basically it's gonna be just like a drop in, okay? So I can leave it like this, this is fine. If you're in the side view um, and you look at it, you'd never notice that those faces were missing, but if you are um, fastidious and you're like, but I can't live with the fact that there are faces, open holes in this geometry, uh, simple enough. We can right click on the geometry and go into edge mode. And if we double click on this open hole, basically, or the edges around this hole, what we can do is shift and right click. And if we come down to here, we can fill that hole. And basically what it does is it builds a polygon there. That's one way we can do that. All right, we could do the same thing over here. We could double click. And since fill hole was the last command that we used, we can actually just tap the G key and it'll fill it up again. So there you go. That's another way to do it. So in this case, uh, I'm just going to, once again, um, assign an existing material. Let's assign the red mat to it. All right. And our guys are way over here. Let's hit W and pull them back. Okay, so you might need to um, scale that up. Um, if I was going to scale this thing just so I keep it on the ground, what I would do is I'd hold down DV and I would snap this to the base. This way it stays on the ground. So when we do a 3D scale of this object, um, it scales up like that. Okay. So let's say we did something like that. So now you have a half pipe. So maybe you did something like this. So your ball jumps out of there, hits out of there. Um, what we could really use is maybe like a ramp or something that kind of, or a curved ramp, so it comes up and then goes into your half pipe, or maybe your half pipe is down here on a different level. So we hold down this X, and basically we do something like this, right? We could do that, so that could kind of work. Um, but where would you be without a good spinner? So everybody needs a good spinner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all this stuff, and just put it on a, uh, separate layer for now and hide it. And I'm gonna show you how to make a quick spinner. Let's go back to the center grid and grab a pipe one more time. So I'm gonna shift right click and grab a pipe, just like that. Now, um, I want five arms out of it. So basically I'm just doing a little math in my head. Um, for spacing purposes, what I want is I am going to make 30 subdivisions. Okay, so I want five arms evenly spaced. So the arms need to be uh, six polygons or six faces apart and I don't want them this big they could be I guess it would make any difference but what I'm going to do is put subdivisions sorry about that I'm going to put subdivisions here okay so what I'm going to do is go into faces mode and I'm going to select a face I'm going to count over six faces one two three four five six hold down shift and every six faces until they come around one two three four five six one, two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. It's a nice evenly spaced five spaces. 
our faces and what I'll do is I'm going to hold down extrude and grab this thickness and punch those out just like that alright you can set them out as much as you want something like that and what I'm going to do then is actually going to tap G one more time and I am going to add a little bit of a extrusion at the end just like that and the reason I'm doing that will make sense in a second I'm going to select that little face hold down shift on each one of these just like this hold down shift then hold down shift and there should be one more hold down shift so now I got all those facing faces on one side I'm gonna tap G one more time and I can just do this just pull that out just a little bit and I'm gonna grab the little cubes allow you to do scaling so I'm gonna grab the scaling on this side and just make that like a little point, just like that. Cool. And now when I get this, let's assign this, that same existing material, red mat. Take the entire thing, and let's rotate it up 90 degrees. And what we'll do is we will bring back everything else. And let's go into the right view and take a look at what we got. Get rid of this grid. Okay, so now we have kind of like a spinner thing that we have. So let's say we moved our spinner thing, like, I don't know, spinner thing could be up here. Okay, could be something like that. So maybe your spinner thing, when the ball hits it, will go around. It, the ball hits it, it spins, the ball bounces across here, heads down the ramp, goes into the half pipe, and you're doing great. Or you could scale this whole thing up a little bit if you want to make it bigger. Um, but whatever you want, um, you could make things like that. If you didn't want them as long, you wanted the shorter, you could do that. Um, you can design this to be anything you want. Um, and I think between the Create Poly tool, which allows you to create flat geometry, you could use uh, 3D geometry to do things like creating the, um, the half pipe okay um, and doing things like these you have a lot of options I think to be able to create and we could actually add thickness to these by uh, extruding them as well so you can go in there just delete their history um, you know we can just go into something like this grab its face and then shift right click and do an extrude and bring that out so if you wanted these as well to just have a little bit of thickness we could do that and you could dress them up and do stuff. Uh, normally, if you were going to make these things into geometry or it was going to be a more formal project, you'd want to quadrify them um, and basically cut these so that this isn't one big, oddly shaped end gone. So you'd probably just use the uh, cutting tool. In fact, we could do that real quick if you're curious what I'm talking about. We could uh, shift right click on this, you split in the split polygon tool. And what you would do is you would just do something like this. And you can come down here, and we could do this to do this. So that gives us a quad there, quad there, or we could have took these quads and come right into these corners, uh, which we can still do. So we can actually come out of here, and we can come down to this. Which way would we want to do it? Uh, we could do this, do this. So you can do any variety of things that you wanted to as far as cutting it up. You could have cut straight down. Um, now we have two triangles there, so that drives you crazy. You know, don't do that. <laughs> but now, uh, in a case like this, when we select this object, we have discrete faces uh, as opposed to um, one huge end gone. Alrighty? So um, that's basically how I would start going about assembling your piece. Obviously, in the case of this, um, without a design to start working with to begin with, um, you could get yourself in trouble really quickly where this is all going to go in one direction. Um, what I would suggest is you could start doing things, um, you know, you might need to get your piece back up in the, uh, you know, top direction. So maybe take these, take this down to one, maybe the uh, depth, take this to five. Um, maybe the ball hits this. Let's take this and assign that same material, the red mat. 
So maybe the ball falls down, this shoots up in the air like that, the ball kind of goes up, bounces off, hits the half pipe, and that's how you could get, you know, height again. What I would do is look at some of the examples that you can find online of ball courses and animations and flow. It's sort of like Rube Goldberg machines, but very manual. You're just creating this uh, and play with it. And uh, hopefully that makes sense as far as building. If you have any further questions, drop them into the Facebook group. All right. Thank you much.